back to Rolando Estacado. My name is Rolando and for today's episode, we're gonna be talking a little bit about Bowie knives and how to make the right selection for your first Bowie acquisition or adding to your Bowie collection. We'll look at the criteria for what makes a good Bowie, not only in terms of performance, tactile feel, the aesthetics of it, from a custom perspective and also the production perspective, that why a production knife, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of production knives, is something that's going to be really great for you in terms of your first acquisition or as part of your collection, only because there's accessibility, value, the build that, it's really great. Ultimately, you go down the rabbit hole of Bowie knives, you're going to end up having a collection and happy to be of service to you, happy to be a guide to you as part of this journey. So I hope you find this video informative and enjoyable. So here are two buoys in my collection. At the very top here is the Cold Steel 1917. Then at the very bottom here, my absolute favorite, my custom Bagwell buoy knife. If you're looking to build a buoy knife collection, it's a very tall order from a historical and traditional perspective because they had to do triple duty in many ways because a buoy knife has to be able to be utilitarian in the absolute toughest way because this was the American frontier. You had to be able to chop wood with it, build shelter with it, fight off the elements. If there are any wild animals, you had to be able to rely on your buoy knife. If you happen to be in a combative situation, and there's a lot of documentation behind that, that the buoy knife was used in a combative manner in the 1800s in the United States. So it has to be robust enough, can take care of your utilitarian duties in the American frontier, also light enough and lively enough in the hand, and we're gonna to get to that in a little bit, it has to feel lively in the hand so that if you have to do a back cut flow or be able to do a snap cut, be able to uh, move in a way so that you can be fast and nimble, but it connects your entire body so it moves all as one, that is what a lively combat buoy is. That's the second criteria. But there's a third criteria if you want to be really historically accurate. It has to denote a type of aesthetic, a kind of prestige, because in those days, even the most well-heeled had to have a buoy that had to be aesthetically pleasing, denoted their status in society. So having that combination of buoy was something that was very important to the American frontiersmen during that time. I'm gonna go first with the custom Bagwell. This is a very tall order because Bill Bagwell, a master buoy knife maker and a knife maker overall, that he was able to pretty much check all those boxes in many ways. It's very aesthetically pleasing. The design is so sleek, but it could also do double duty. So I'm gonna unsheathe this right now. And something I want you to pay attention to as I tell this story is that this Bowie Damascus knife, uh, a lot of his clients from what I understand were also in the military and he would tell me stories about how, you know, a particular uh, major in the United States military not only used this, like brought it with him as his edge tool, but he used it to, among other things, cut, cut mud flaps off of trucks. I thought, that is the craziest thing I've ever heard. That he said, yeah, but it's also lively in the hand because that's what he was looking for. So note the sleekness of it. Note that it's uh, it's not a very wide kind of blade, but it's so well made. Look how narrow that is and all but disappears on towards the tip. But this is absolutely robust. It can do double duty. But there's one thing I got to tell you about this buoy that you should be looking for if you're looking to add a buoy knife. And this is my own criteria. And this was Bill's criteria. It's gotta be lively in the hand. You have a series of neural receptors in your hand and throughout the entire hand. And so that once it makes contact with something, there are nerve signals going up your entire arm, which connects your entire body to that thing that you happen to be picking up, whether that's a barbell or a kettlebell or a bag of groceries, that information that you receive from the neural receptors in your hand has a lot to do with when you grip it, that information tells your body what you're supposed to do, whether you're supposed to brace your transverse abdominis or whether you're supposed to take a deep breath or whether you're supposed to put your shoulders in a certain position. 
it gives information to your central nervous system, which is beyond your cognitive functions, right? This is the liveliness that you're looking for when you pick up a Bowie knife. And Bill Bagwell was very big on this, in that once you pick up his knife, now mind you, remember in my previous videos, I would send him, he would request a hand drawing of my hand so that he can approximate my entire skeletal anatomy. So he could design it in such a way so that once I pick up this buoy, it is absolutely alive in my hand, meaning my entire body just goes, whoa, I know how to move with this. But more importantly, and I have to say this, the tool, the way it's designed, is teaching you how to move. It's teaching you how to optimize your back cut. It's teaching you how to move with it in such a way so that if you make any sort of false movement, the balance of the knife is such is that it won't move optimally. So if you are looking to get a Bowie knife and you're looking at that criteria of meaning you, it, you feel connected to it, it doesn't feel dead in your hand, meaning it's not like a lead pipe. Just take a look at the overall design Note how thin it is here and how it thins out. Note the false edge, and that's actually very sharp. Look how sharp that needle point tip is. Look at the gun shape handle so that the ergonomics is really just there. It's really superb. Just an overall beautiful design. And the sheath also, by the way, uh, Bill made this himself. I want to move our attention now to this magnificently designed cold steel 1917 buoy i mean first of all it's based off of historical designs that we see in norm flaterman's book it's just phenomenal so again we want to make sure that it checks all of those boxes utilitarian all you have to do is go to youtube do a search you'll see all of the tests that have been done in terms of what this 1917 can do i mean they it the 1917 has been thrown at logs chops logs it takes a beating. It does the utilitarian stuff. As far as the combatives is concerned, it doesn't necessarily have that combat, lively feeling to it the way a custom does. Look at how massive this knife is. Really gorgeous design. And a few things, as I mentioned in a previous video, no sharp and false edge at all. I can run my finger on this all day. I hope you can see this, but there's no false edge at all. But there is still a very sharp tip. You can still back cut with this tip and you'll see it uh, later in the video. But it's relatively thick. Take a look at how thick that is. And that's what makes it, one, absolutely robust. But also, number two, it's it makes it heavy in the hand. You, you can still move with it. You'll see it in the video. You still move with it. But it doesn't have that same alive feel. This is apples and oranges. This is a production knife versus a custom Damascus by one of the greatest masters of the Bowie knife ever, Bill Bagwell. There's no comparison, but this is still a very good Bowie knife because it checks the majority of the boxes in terms of utilitarian and aesthetic, somewhat on the combative side, but you won't feel the same liveliness of a custom job, but beautiful overall. Now, if you're interested in what a lively, production knife is there's only one i'm going to recommend the cold steel laredo this is an absolute sleeper of a knife i bought this back in the day when i think these were going for maybe 120 bucks or something like that and it is so lively it is so beautiful in the hand and some things that i want to i want you to see here it does the utilitarian job really well if i'm not mistaken both the cold steel 1917 and the Laredo are both SK5, which if I'm not mistaken, is the equivalent of 1095, which is absolutely, it's a great steal. But the some things I want you to consider when you purchase this is that this is not full tank construction. This is wire tang construction. So it's not a full uh, blade construction all the way through. It's, I think it's only about halfway or maybe a third of the way. Still good, still super robust. But just be aware of that when you're looking to purchase this specific buoy knife. It's also a little bit on the smaller side, maybe about 10 and a half inches. You're looking at 12 inches over here. This is about 11 inches. So just a hair smaller. But this is super lively. And also that false edge is super sharp. 
So this is one, if you want to go ahead and get a lively combat buoy for your buoy combatives practice, I cannot recommend the Cold Steel Laredo enough. Are they an equivalent to a custom? Not necessarily, uh, only because once something is customized to your build, to your skeleton, honestly nothing compares because by the time you get something like that, that buoy knife this buoy knife feels like it's just a part of you. Now, if you're looking at custom jobs, that's where you also have to be very mindful in that you want it to be utilitarian, you want it to be kind of lively. The only one where I'm a little nervous about recommending anybody specifically is because you, I don't know too many people who are really into buoy combatives anymore, but are also into like really top of the line custom knives and uh, custom buoy knives. I think the only person I would recommend and only because Bill Bagwell recommended him was, well not was, but is the great Jerry Fisk. But I don't know if you can even get on his list. I think it's like a you know, 20, 30,000 year wait list at this point. I think uh, aliens are lined up for his custom list and I don't think they'll be able to make it through several millennia. But it's nearly, I mean, all kidding aside, I mean, he's a magnificent, magnificent Bowie knife maker. And I think he's the closest one, I would say. Uh, but then again, you know, I have yet to really handle um, other custom knife works where it's like, all right, you know, is this, was it done with a specific design in mind? So... Uh, just give that some thought when you're making your considerations between a buoy uh, that is production and a custom. So have those things in mind, and you're gonna be it's gonna be a great journey for you. And uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to leave them in the comments. We're gonna go ahead with the buoy back cut flow, and once again, I just gotta point this out. You know my good old princess G over here she just loves her buoy knives and like the minute it's a buoy knife she just has to come over here well she likes Bali songs too but she just loves uh, being here and joining us so I'm glad she, she was able to join she loves buoys just like her dad let's take a look at the cold steel 1917 a big beautiful buoy one of the best that I've seen from cold steel this is my back cut test over here and we cut through that paper and it cuts through it very nice and cleanly very nice clean straight line and that's despite the fact that it doesn't have a sharpened false edge. It tells you a lot about the design of a buoy knife. You only need that needle point to really do what it needs to do to a particular target. When I move with a 1917, I have to have a really great internal focus to make sure that my control is good. I'm the one who's dictating the quality of the movement because it's such a heavy blade, but overall still very good. This is the Damascus Bagwell, super sleek, super light, super lively. And this is the back cut test and take a look at it how it cuts through then it explodes out that's because of the design of the blade that once it cuts through the rest of the blade exits through the target and it explodes out of it when i do my back cut flow with her i don't tell her what to do she's instructive she's the one who tells me what to do she's the boss when it comes to this back cut flow all her i just follow and finally let's take a look at the cold steel laredo also very nicely well done and very well executed one of the most well executed cold steel buoy products and i would say that it's super fast in terms of back cuts and snap cuts very light and if you're taking a look at your first buoy i would say this would be the first one especially if you're a buoy combatants practitioner it's going to lend really well into your practice the back cut of it is actually pretty similar to the Bagwell Damascus. Lynn Thompson and Bagwell talked a lot when it came to the Cold Steel Laredo, so it performs similarly. I would say that when you're starting your collection, there's many things for you to consider. I hope this video was very informative and enjoyable for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thank you very much. More videos to come.